you all for being here today. Uh, I'll be presenting Lightning Network uh, Beyond Transactions. So basically all the uh, application use cases that you can make with the Lightning Network on top of Bitcoin. So I'll be sharing my screen and that's how you'll be able to follow. Um, so let me just do this. Shouldn't be too long. Okay. So you should be able to see my screen and uh, myself in uh, presentation mode. So welcome all to this uh, webinar. Uh, I've been, we've been doing web that Bitcoin Montreal organizes. We've been doing them for around uh, uh, a year or so, even a little bit more, a year and a half. Uh, Verifiable Bitcoin and Francis Bully have been doing them for over six years now. Uh, so uh, you're always welcome to be here. We, we organize uh, uh, webinars on many times a week these days, uh, and we'll be making meetups uh, eventually as well. That's what we're known for. So myself, I'm Gustavo Flores, and I'm head of product and research at Verify. So we'll be going through a very quick Bitcoin background, then an intro to the Lightning Network, and then I'm gonna talk about chat applications, authentication, the liquid network on top of lightning so there's um, some cool applications there and something called Prometheus and something called rgb protocol so first of all myself for those who don't know me uh, uh like i said i'm head of product and research at verify so uh i do some development as well right now i'm very focused javascript and react uh we're i'm very passionate about bitcoins and and about free markets which in my opinion is highly related and i'm a consultant on everything that's bitcoin and lightning i'm always ready to help people start projects or security bitcoins and and that's kind of the services my company offers so we uh we consult p folks on, on bitcoin so it's either uh developing applications or uh uh, regarding these technologies or making data analysis uh, making case studies to see if companies should adopt bitcoin technologies or, or should invest into bitcoin um, and then securing bitcoin well everything that's around privacy uh, either for companies and individuals uh, a lot of time we have uh, some requests by investors to have bitcoins and they want to secure them so we can help with that as well and we can help with buying and selling bitcoin and uh, really no amount of limit uh, in terms of liquidity but we also offer a personalized service to all canadians and if you want you can also message me and i can send you a link to a demo uh, to a beta testing that we're doing with a web app that will allow canadians to buy bitcoin on our website very soon and in a very simple way so uh, you can always contact me for that or for anything else all right so first of all to start bitcoin is censorship resistant money with limited supply and it's 21 million bitcoins right so i think most of you know this there can only be 21 million and so if you want one out of 21 million today or in 100 years it's the same thing right can't say the same about your canadian dollar or us dollar so it's censorship resistant money because well you can uh, you can do whatever you want with it nobody can stop you kind of like a piece of paper i go i i give it to someone at the store i give it to someone on the street nobody can stop me giving a piece of paper but making a bank transaction it's kind of easy to stop by the bank right so here you can see a graphic of bitcoin supply if you don't know it already uh we're around 2020 now so we're around 18 million bitcoin and very soon we'll be getting to 21 uh to almost 21 and it will go on like that till like 200 2140 until we get to 21 million bitcoin so and so like i said censorship resistant because uh, here's a, a very good example of Julian Assange, which was the spokesperson and founder of WikiLeaks, uh, which was an organization that uh, basically received secrets from uh, whistleblowers and released them to the public, either U.S. military uh, secrets, either CIA secrets, whatever, right? You name it, or either big company secrets. So Julian Assange uh, and WikiLeaks were blocked by the U.S. government and basically they forced every company to turn them off visa mastercard paypal you name it and there was no way for wikileaks to get any money so for that for them to survive other than bitcoin because bitcoin is censorship resistant money through the internet so you can send it to someone you don't know you don't have to reveal your identity so wikileaks could receive bitcoin without revealing their location and without being censored 
and Bitcoin was so low in price in 2010 that they basically uh, got like $30 million and it allowed them to survive until today. So this is a clear example of censorship resistance that even the most powerful uh, organization in the world, the US government, couldn't stop. So then we have the, but then comes a, another problem, another situation, right? Which is the scalability problem. Basically, we have in the Bitcoin network some limits. And the main limit is state. So to be all in agreement that uh, out of these 21 million Bitcoins, I have three, let's say, and you have five. Well, to be in agreement that this is the case so that it's really my property and it's not someone else's property because it's simple with a piece of paper, right? I have it in my hands. It's mine. Uh, there's nobody that has, you don't need, I don't need to make a proof that I have it. It's the proof is the the reality. That's it, right? With Bitcoin, since it's digital, it works a little bit differently. So you need to have a global constant state. And that's what we often call the blockchain. I just call it a ledger because that's what it is. It's the boring part of Bitcoin. It's just uh, somewhere where we need to keep all the state of the network. Say how much, who has what. Right, and we update that state every time there's transactions, so we know how how did Bitcoin change hands, right? And uh, right right now it's around two megabytes of data that we can have every ten minutes that we can to update the state, and that's very low. If if you if you know uh, uh, how much two megabytes of data is, it's around one picture. Uh, sometimes sometimes it's around uh, one song, so it 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 really isn't much of uh, information. So that goes with 10 transactions per second maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit less anyways so the question is naturally like oh but shouldn't just we just increase the amount of data per 10 minutes so that we increase the 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 limit uh kind of like thinking like this right okay we'll just add more hard drives or, or more routers so that we can increase the speed of uh of the transactions right so could do that but then you have one issue is that you put a risk the value proposition that i talked about in the beginning which was censorship resistant money and 21 million bitcoins the reason why we have those values and nobody can censor you and nobody can create more bitcoins is because we have a decentralized network if you have more data per seconds more transactions per second on the base layer well that kind of stops being true you you don't have a decentralized network anymore because nobody can run bitcoin nodes so it just turns out to be like five companies they make a deal in a hotel room and that's it so they can change the rules if, if that would have happened but that isn't the case we have the link network which is just a way of saying hey why do we have to use the bitcoin network to make transactions why can't we just use the bitcoin network to have the definition of what a Bitcoin is, the main state of who holds what. But if uh, all users want to make other transactions, well, they can make it through another channel, another network. Kind of like uh, you can pay with US dollars on MasterCard, but you can also pay on PayPal, right? It's just another network. But the difference here is that it's not a company that's just selling you, okay, you have this amount of Bitcoin. It's not that. The Lightning Network is built using bitcoin smart contracts or bitcoin protocols that allows it to remain non-custodial that allows it that you transact on a lightning network but you still control your keys you still control your bitcoins and that's extremely important right so what does it allow briefly instant payments micro payments you can do uh, you can send one satoshi which is like uh, 100 of a cent i think um you can have massive scale you can do uh millions of transactions per second if you have enough nodes and we have like thirteen thousand nodes and just to so that you know uh two nodes between themselves can make like 400 transactions per second and there's thirteen thousand nodes so if each if each of those two a pair of those thirteen thousands you make pairs can make 400 guess how much thirteen thousand nodes can make transactions that means just we got tens of hundreds of thousands right there maybe even more so and that's just thirteen thousand nodes. When it, what it, what what happens when there's one million nodes, right? So uh, the scale is almost infinite. You have very low fees uh, because payments aren't done on the blockchain. 
so you don't have to pay the miners, right? Uh, and you have better privacy. So how do you achieve that? Uh, it's a set of Bitcoin protocols, and I'm not going to go too much into detail, uh, but I'm still going to explain briefly. So first of all, we are two users, let's say, uh, me and my colleague Tristan, and we have, uh, we have to create a multi-signature contract where we send Bitcoins. So let's say he sends one and I send one. And once we got Bitcoins in that, uh, we call it uh, uh, the multi-signature wallet, but we create a payment channel. And the payment channel is just uh, is half one Bitcoin each, right? And then in that payment channel, we can update that payment channel uh, by sending each other, let's say, uh, a tenth of uh, a tenth of um, excuse me, a tenth of a Bitcoin. And then we just send each other back and forth a tenth of a Bitcoin. And once we do that, we uh, we once we do that, we can we don't have to update the blockchain. We don't have to propagate the transaction to the miners and everyone. We can just keep the transaction between ourselves. And we can let's say let's say we're playing a game of cards. And then once we we do that, we just send each other back and forth the point one. Uh, because we, I lose, then he wins. Uh, let's say we do it like 25 times. We do 25 rounds. And then once we finish, uh, it's not exactly 0.1 back and forth. We finish with like, I have 1.4 and he was 0.6. So I took 0.4 out of him. Uh, and we did it in like 25 transactions. It was back and forth a little bit. And then we, we just come back to the Bitcoin blockchain and we say to the blockchain, the final state, we say, I have 1.4. He has 0.6, and that's how we exit the payment channel. So the network, the blockchain, and the miners are only aware of the first transaction that said one Bitcoin each, and the last transaction, which said 1.4 and 0.6 for the other party. So, and that's all they need to be aware of. Meanwhile, we did 27 transactions between ourselves, one, one, and 25 in the middle, right? So that's the, and so, and we paid only the fees related to the first the first and the last, because that's the only ones we send to the blockchain. So that's basically how the Lightning Network works, to have more scale, pay less fees, uh, and also be more private, right? So, and that's just between two people. And a question would be, okay, but does it mean that I have to make a payment channel with everyone that I'm sending funds on the Lightning Network? And no, it doesn't. You can make, you can use hashtag block contracts, which allow you to route payments. Uh, and routing payments works kind of like Tor in the sense that uh, I can send you funds and let's say I'm connect I still want to send funds to Tristan, but now I'm not directly connected to him. Now I'm connected to my friend uh, Albert. And I have a payment channel with Albert and Tristan has a payment channel with Albert. So I can send funds to Tristan by routing through Albert. And that's how the Lightning Network works. You can see it here uh, in the image on top, you see there's like thousands of nodes connected. So they're not all connected directly, but indirectly they're connected because they can route through the others that are in the middle, kind of like Tor works, you know. Uh, Tor works, it's, it allows you to connect with a server uh, to a website uh, without the website knowing that uh, it's you but also without the people in the middle that are routing the payments, uh, knowing either where it came from or where it goes. The first person, if you see in the image below, the first Tor uh, computer knows that it came from Alice, but it doesn't know where the destination is going because it only knows that it's going to another Tor computer. And then the second Tor computer doesn't know Alice or doesn't know the destination. And then the third one only knows the destination. So the Lightning Network can work in a very similar way. It's just onion routed in the sense that uh, when I send funds to someone and I route to three persons, those three persons can't de-anonymize me. And that's an advantage of the Lightning Network uh, in terms of privacy to Bitcoin as well. So uh, that's those are called hash time lock contracts because they can't be stolen. Basically, because the people in the middle have signed a smart contract that says that if they get the funds, uh, they cannot steal them. They have already consented 
to routing them to, to me back. So uh, that's how uh, you don't you, you cannot steal funds on the Lightning Network uh, by routing. And also to do all this, by the way, you need to have encrypted P2P communication, uh, obviously for the nodes and the peers to talk between themselves on the Lightning Network because they're not using the Bitcoin network anymore. So they need a way to communicate and send payments uh, and everything, right? So this is pretty much how the Lightning Network is. Uh, so here's a meme saying, what are you trying to tell me? That I can get my Bitcoins out of the Lightning Network at any time just by closing the payment channel? Because yes, that's the point. At any time, any user in a payment channel, uh, let's say during the game I was playing with Tristan, uh, I was... I could have just quit it and said, by Tristan, I got the state that you committed to, uh, but that we didn't publish to the network. Well, I'm going to take it and I'm going to publish it. And there's a process of like, uh, which is called like, this is called a forced closure, a forced close channel that I forced Tristan to close it. Uh, and I will succeed if I'm not trying to cheat. If I'm trying to cheat and there's actually a later state that says that I lost money and I'm trying to cheat uh, by not publishing the, the state where I lost money, but instead the one where I won money, then Tristan can just say, uh, can just publish to the network and tell everybody, hey, this guy is lying. There was actually a later state in our channel and uh, that punishes me by taking away all my funds from the payment channel and giving them all to Tristan. So that is the situation where you don't want to be in. And that's why people don't cheat much on the Lightning Network because it's uh, you, you, you ultimately fail. So the, the meme says... Uh, by ans uh, answering the, the question that I asked. Uh, no, Neil, I'm trying to tell you that when it's ready, you won't have to. So a lot of people say, once we get to the Lightning Network at scale in around five, 10 years, when people will want to spend their Bitcoins because they'll be worth so much, well, you won't want, you'll stay on the Lightning Network. You won't uh, come back on chain and pay huge fees because it will be also very secure as well eventually. We hope so. So um, I'm going to make a basic like, demo and demonstration. So before presenting the, the, the apps, which I'm going to do next, uh, first, Lightning Network, you can still do, we still call them laps, uh, Lightning apps, but they're, they're just payment apps. So basically, here's an app, which is pretty cool that I like, um, that you go here and you, let's say you want to read this article, okay? Uh, or any other article that's on this page. You got to make a payment. So let's go here. This anonymous posted uh, this uh, text. And let's say I read the introduction and I like it. Uh, then I can just go to continue reading. And I can just go here and I can put a QR code. And I can pay this invoice with the Lightning Network, which is only like one cent. And if uh, it's all done correctly, well, I get uh, to read the payment. So let me get out my wallet and I'll make a payment very quick. You won't be able to see my phone, uh, me making the payment, but you'll be able to see that it's refreshing. It's, it's, I paid it, right? So I click on pay on my phone, but you can't see that. Uh, and there it is. The transaction is confirmed. And uh, because it's not going on the blockchain, it's just me and this person, uh, yals.org, uh, and that's it. Well, actually, not yals.org, but the person who posted the article, they already got my money. So here is the article. Pretty cool, right? That you can, I can pay an anonymous person without trusting each other. I paid them one cent in Bitcoin instantly, and they delivered to me uh, an article. Right. So and I didn't have to identify myself with this website or logging or nothing. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and that's kind of things that Lightning enables. Right. Because when you're making a credit card payment on the Web, uh, you don't uh, you don't get to um, to do microtransactions because MasterCard charges you for like uh, like 60 cents per transaction or I think 30 cents per transaction. So if you want to send five cents, you're not going to pay 30 cents in fees. So nobody has ever told themselves, hey, we're going to do we're going to do that. Right. Uh, everybody has just said, hey, we're we're just not going to make trans microtransactions a thing 
and that's kind of been what uh, what this is uh, since forever, right? So then, but this what, what Lightning enables, and I, and I think it's pretty cool. So now to the real Lightning Network apps beyond transactions. So chat messages, chat messages are probably like the most hot and popular. Uh, like uh, non-transaction apps on the Lightning Network right now. And basically the Lightning Network, we're routing encrypted payments. So somebody thought like, how different is that from routing encrypted messages? Mm -hmm. And it turns out to be, it's not very different because Bitcoin and Lightning are just messaging protocols. Everything that is on Bitcoin is just data, right? Um, literally everything about Bitcoin because it's, it's, it's software. We're using software to to revolution and, and we're using lightning we're using software to make a payment revolution with bitcoin so um it's not very different uh and using keysend keysend is a new feature uh, that's available i think in in, in ln it's, it's available wildly i think lnd c lightning eclair so the three main implementations have it now but i think it was initially developed in lnd and it allows you to send a payment to another node without requesting an invoice. So if you saw when I did the payment in YAS, there was a, a QR code and I paid that QR code and it got a payment to the to the to the individual I was paying. But I didn't pay, it's not like a Bitcoin address where I send a Bitcoin address and I can send funds again and again and again and I can send any amount. And Lightning, there's the concept of invoice. And an invoice only works once. So you pay it, it's completed, and that's it. It's not like a destination. It's just an invoice. Uh, like you pay a credit card invoice. You can only pay it once, right? So you can have key sent, and you can send payments without requesting an invoice. It's like you send to an address. You can just send many payments, many payments. Uh, and so there's two apps that have uh, basically that are the the main ones developing this but there's actually a few more so the the one that i think is the most advanced is sphinx it has an android and an ios app um and it allows you to make payments and allows you to make chats and allows you to make even group chats and everything is done on the lightning network so juggernaut and juggernaut is another one available it's sphinx is mobile juggernaut is more desktop um juggernaut let's say the user experience is less good because it's more sovereign uh, in juggernaut you connect to your own node you do it all through your own backend and your own uh, you know a, a node sphinx you use the node uh provided by the developers and the company behind the developers sphinx but uh since it's encrypted they can't read your messages so it's kind of like whatsapp if we should compare, Sphinx is very similar as WhatsApp. It's like if WhatsApp um, could allow payments as well, and um, it's and it's really encrypted because WhatsApp's not really encrypted in terms of metadata and and many other uh, contacts and many other things. Sphinx is fully encrypted. So, um, but if you want the option where you have full control, you can use Juggernaut. Both are really good. Um, so. Here I'm going to make a demo uh, where you should see this might be a little bit tricky uh, because I'm not going to share my screen uh, to my computer. I'm going to share my phone screen because it's a, it's a mobile app. Um, so you it's not going to be the same uh, screen. So I'm going to stop presenting here and I'm going to start presenting on my phone. And you should see that uh, I started presenting on my phone. Okay, so you should see now that I'm presenting on my phone. Um, and yes, I, I can see it myself on my desktop. So I'm gonna go on uh, sphinx.chat. And here you see that I'm on the Sphinx app. And here let's, I'm, I've been talking to a, a user named Paul. Uh, he's actually the developer behind the, 
the, the app uh, well or the, the the project manager um and here i can add a friend i don't have many friends because i just started using it but uh if someone of you was already on sphinx i would just need your name and a sphinx address or like a an identifier um and then i would go on group uh, and i could make a group as well i can make a private group uh, i could add all my contacts or i could make a public group so and and this is all done through the Lightning network but also i can also uh request payments uh and send it to someone on the chat because it's it's using the Lightning network so we can obviously use payments as well um and i can also uh, scan a qr code to pay uh, because it's also a Lightning wallet uh so i can i can pay i can make payments as well so uh and what's actually cool is you can also send pictures um and you can also send uh, messages that you have to pay for so let's say i'm selling you a picture i'm selling you a video media um and then i can send you to my chat a picture and but you have to pay like 10 sats or 1000 sats to 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 uh, unblock it right uh well well we could do that and actually it's not stored on the Lightning network because there's no like database uh, it's actually stored somewhere else, but it's encrypted and the token to decrypt it is sent through the Lightning Network and, st uh, and against the payment. So I pay you, you send me the token of decryption and the location of the, of the, of the item, and then I, I just uh, decrypt the, the image and I get access to the data that you've, you've sold to me, basically. So that's uh, very cool. And I'm going to stop sharing with this and uh, I'm going to go back to uh, presenting uh, with uh, my desktop on the slides. All right. OK, so you should see my screen again, uh, but it on my desktop. So uh, does anybody know? Well, I, I don't think you're going to answer, but uh maybe you can say it on the chat if you know what this is the 402 payment required uh and i'm not talking about chat anymore i'm gonna talk about something else so this was invented in the early days of the web uh when the http protocol was was invented basically like more than 30, 20 almost 25 years ago and for those who don't know who don't know what this is it's actually a non-standard client error status response code uh, that was reserved for future use. So it's it's not very used. Uh, some people use it still, but it's it's almost never used. And this was meant to, uh, and this was done by the GNU organization, uh, meant to in, uh, to be compatible with a digital cash or micropayment system. Uh, that would indicate that the requesting content is not available until the client makes a payment. So basically, the the the, the founders of the web or, or the, of the HTTP protocol uh, envisioned uh, a world where we would have a protocol of payments natively of, of the web that we would use with, uh, let's say, uh, HTTP protocols. And that's kind of interesting because that's what's been developed on the Lightning Network. So... You have a technology named LSAT, Lightning Service Authentication Token, developed by Lightning Labs, which enables you basically to, to make a payment through an HTTP request for a product. So I can just uh, have my website uh, and use this HTTP 402 error if someone has not paid uh, through Lightning. And as soon as they pay through Lightning with LSAT, uh, I can remove that error. So it's actually compatible. Uh, it's it's actually the perfect use case, and actually what was envisioned when uh, the HTTP protocol was was created uh, more than twenty years ago. So this is kind of interesting, and and you can see this in in other occasions as well. Like it's not the only occasion where the the founders of the web envisioned uh, natively digital payment system of the web. Uh, Bitcoin was always meant to happen. Uh, and, and, and it's lightning was always meant to happen as well. Uh, it was just a question of, of developing the right tools and making it a success and making it possible to happen. And, and you can see it also, there, there was many tries before Bitcoin, such as B gold or B money, or even e cash, uh, where folks tried to make a decentralized currency, but failed. 
um, and may, they, maybe because they didn't have a piece. Every time there was a piece missing, uh, it was either mining that was missing. It was either the nodes. It was either the, the founder wasn't anonymous. So the, the FBI got to them first, right? So Bitcoin has all those components that make it, uh, well, it has been undestructible until this point. And uh, I would bet with anybody that claims otherwise. So back to LSAT. You, so you can make a payment to an HTTP request for a product, uh, and but you can also pay for API access without an account. So let's say I'm a developer, and I want to buy uh, and I want to develop a, a Bitcoin product, uh, but this API that I'm, I'm I'm developing with is a paid API after let's say 100 calls uh, per day, and now I'm at uh, I'm, I've I've passed the threshold, and I want to keep on using this API to develop my application. Well, I can just pay with LSAT uh, and myself with the, the company, and I, but without an account. So I don't have to need to, to use a credit card or an email or whatever, or a password even. I can just say, hey, here's my Lightning service notification token, and here's my Lightning payment. And I can, if you want, I can program to send you this payment every time I cross a new threshold. Uh, we can all program this, and that's it. Uh, so if not, I'm not a developer, well, I can just log in without email to any web service, but still authenticate. So this is kind of a digital identity. Things folks have been talking about for, for, for the last couple of years on the web uh, with all these new technologies. Well, Lightning enables this as well. So LSAT is authentication, digital identity, and uh, paying for... And uh, with by leveraging this, it allows you to pay uh, for things on the web, uh, basically anonymously. So and natively with compatib native compatibility with the web protocols. So Lightning Labs uses it for their Loop service. Uh, loop is a way for you to to do um, something called swaps. So let's say I want to pay. Um, a Lightning invoice, but I only have a Bitcoin wallet that has no Lightning in it. So I, I have Bitcoin, but I can I just don't have Bitcoin on Lightning. So I'm not onboarded into Lightning, but I still have the same currency. It's like you have big uh, US dollar uh, in your pocket, but you don't have it in your bank account, right? It's just it's the same currency, uh, but it's just not on the same platform. Let's say so. Loop is a service that allows you to pay Lightning invoices without being onboarded into Lightning, or the other way around as well. It, if you you're, if you have Bitcoin on Lightning, but you want to pay a, a Bitcoin bill outside of Lightning, you just want to pay a Bitcoin address, well, you can use Loop to do that as well. So basically submarine swaps, they're called. And uh, Loop uh, uses, um, it's, it's an API, so basically you just call you you can develop your apps with this uh through the api and uh as soon as you hit a threshold of transactions or for for every transaction i don't know exactly the pricing mechanism here you have it it's a 0 0.05 to 0 0.5 for a loop out so that means exiting lightning uh paying a, a bitcoin address with lightning funds and the loop in the other way around is 0.1 to, to 1%. I, I don't know what the, depends on how it varies. Uh, and, and you can just pay through the API without registration, completely anonymously using LSAT, obviously. So this is very interesting for developers particularly. So and then we have on, on another side of, of the coin, another side of, of what we can develop with Lightning. Basically, we have Liquid. So Liquid is not so much a Lightning app as it is uh, an alternative Bitcoin platform, also called a sidechain, also called a, uh, it's, it's a blockchain. It's a blockchain that uses Bitcoin as its currency. And because it uses Bitcoin as its currency, it's way more competitive than any other of those altcoins such as Ethereum, or those enterprise blockchains such as Hyperledger, because it has already solved the currency issue. When you're building on Ethereum or EOS, 
not only you have to deal with the technological issues and challenges, but you also have to deal with the monetary challenges of making a stable currency or making a, a currency that has any type of value proposition. Well, Bitcoin has already a very clear value proposition that's widely recognized by the users on the web. So it doesn't liquid by using Bitcoin that has doesn't need to deal with these challenges. It only needs to deal with the technical challenges and liquid changes a few rules to make Bitcoin on liquid more interesting. That means confidential. That means uh, more programmable. And that's kind of what we're talking about. So liquid plus lightning means very confidential transactions on the Lightning network. So even if Lightning network provides more privacy for Bitcoin, it's still not perfect. But with liquid, it's even better. So there you have it. But all what's what interests me the most is probably simplicity. So simplicity is a programming language that is uh, formally verified in the sense that you can make sure that it has no bugs either it won't work it's not just or like haskell or rust uh it's more functional than, than uh, object oriented so simplicity is very interesting because it allows you to do more stuff than you can do uh, with bitcoin small contracts but it's still secure and formally verified unlike ethereum or eos which are just uh, a bunch of bugs and issues like just this morning I was reading on Twitter uh, that bank or one of the main Ethereum apps has another hack which and it's losing tens of millions of dollars right so that's just that's just a regular Thursday for Ethereum and like Bitcoin liquid lightning which are very secure technology so simplicity will allow you to make decentralized exchanges it will allow you to make um like monero or zcash type of privacy and build it into liquid just by writing a small smart contract so you don't even need to make like network upgrades you can only just write a, a script with simplicity to make uh, cryptographic improvements to your transactions uh and 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 there's many else things that that will happen with simplicity but liquid is a blockchain so it has a limit of around the same as bitcoin around like 10 transactions per second but with the lightning network on top well there you have it you have liquid private programmable with simplicity but infinitely or at least massively scalable so that's pretty cool uh and then you have liquid assets on lightning network so uh liquid allows you to make assets so let's say i want to make a us dollar on the liquid blockchain so that we can transact US uh, token, a representation of a US dollar uh, emitted by a bank or like a company, but it's 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 like a, just a, a bank, right? And but still, you can you can use USDT on Lightning Network. Like I don't like that much because I use Bitcoin for 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 real use cases, right? Censorship resistant payments or simply confiscation resistant saving. Uh, but still, I think the market wants. USDT and LCAT, mostly for trading, for arbitrage. Um, so I think those on the Lightning Network are very well placed. And then we have, to finish this presentation, uh, we have the third layer of protocols. And this is kind of crazy. This is kind of hard to grasp. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Um, just going to present it briefly. So we have something called RGB protocol. Uh, and RGB protocol... It's basically um, allowing you to have tokens as Liquid allows you to have tokens, but their natively existence is on the Lightning Network. So there's no blockchain or sidechain attached to this, right? Um, and then, uh, but what it allows you to do is that it, it natively creates like a decentralized exchange of tokens uh, within the Lightning Network itself. And it leverages, and, and by the way, I want to add this to it. And it's basically just, uh, uh, it's, it's very important to this part of the presentation, but it was also relevant to the other app type of applications that I presented. But it's, it's the initial protocols that I presented, the initial lightning protocols, the multisig, the payment channels, the time locks, the hash time lock contracts. It's a combination of all of them 
that will end combination of Bitcoin protocols that exist only on Bitcoin, um, such as uh, settlement, such as uh, proof of work, such as uh, 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 script uh, code. So basically, the the Bitcoin script language. So anything of a combination of all of that allows us to make third layer protocols. Um, and eventually, we don't know what's the limit, right? So uh, RGB is pretty interesting. It's being worked right now by Pandora, which are like the founders behind this and and behind many other crazily interesting projects. Uh, but RGB is very popular uh, because it's backed by many organizations. I think Bitfinex is working on this. Uh, I think uh, Bitrefill is working on this. Uh, BHB network, uh, like an Italian uh, Bitcoin uh, consultancy boutique firm is working on this as well. So there's many folks working on RGB. Um, definitely uh, millions worth of dollar of uh, development efforts and costs, right? So RGB is, is certainly very hot as well. Uh, but still, still on the uh, on the early days, we're talking about all of these technologies, right? It's easier to make a things than to make a third layer protocol like RGB. It, obviously, you're going to take way more time uh, to get to the finished user consumer product from RGB than from uh, Sphinx. If there's any, right? Like I'm just talking about the possibilities. I'm not talking about the market penetration or any other of, of those which are very important challenges as well. I'm just talking about what is possible and what has been done. That can be reserved for another time. So Prometheus is actually the craziest project that I could have no idea that could be possible. So the, my way to explain it is, I don't know you, you don't know me, but I can pay you $100,000 worth of Bitcoin or whatever, and you can do machine learning computing for me trustlessly. So basically, I tell you, this is what I want. Uh, and it has all sorts of complicated cryptographic algorithm to verify this and of uh, settlement in case of dispute. Um, and, and it's very advanced, um, but it's, it's very interesting because it leverages every uh, Lightning protocol and, ev and many Bitcoin protocols as well. It's not only Lightning and uh, like like the, the Sphinx was and, and, and LSAT is, right? It's, it's also a combination of uh, uh, big multi-sigs, 15 out of 15 multi-sigs. Uh, we're talking about very long uh, scripting and I think it needs Taproot as well. Uh, so it's, it's a bunch of Bitcoin stuff all made, put together that can give us this. Uh, so Pandora is behind all these projects. So I'm, I'm going to check Pandora a second with you guys so that you can see uh they don't have many info they're very like github present uh, that's where you'll find everything uh but it's definitely very interesting how how they define everything so primitives they call it scalable high low computing and machine learning on top of bitcoin so will it be possible uh, it makes sense on paper we'll see we'll have market penetration uh, we'll see. Those are questions to be left for the future. So that's pretty much it for the uh, the protocols and the and the apps. Uh, so you can find here are some references. And just after this, uh, in like two three minutes, when the period of questions starts, I'm gonna post the the slides to the on on the chat so that anybody can get them. Uh, but we're, we're probably gonna good to put them on the meetup group as well. So if anybody wants to consult this, this video of this presentation will be on our YouTube as all our, 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 our presentations are. You can just go on Bitcoin Montreal on YouTube and you'll find all the videos of our presentations. And you can even like, if you, let's say you want to send to your friends just a part of this presentation, we will even break it down into pieces. So I'll have a, like the, the first part would be like how the Lightning Network works, then chat applications, then we'll, you can just send a piece uh, if you just want to send like five, 10 minute videos instead of like one hour videos. Uh, so you can have, you, you have many, many links here. The YouTube link here is a presentation uh, I did on Liquid. So if you want to get into Liquid to better understand how it works with Lightning, uh, you can do so. And so, to add up, to finish up, you want to build the next hotlining app, 
uh, you want to build a, a very nice chat app with uh, like paid APIs without accounts, uh, like an extremely futuristic cypherpunk application. Uh, well, get in touch with us. We're going to help you. Uh, you're not, uh, it's definitely uh, something that 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 is, is important to think about, if, particularly if you're an entrepreneur, a developer, uh, particularly if you're building on Ethereum uh, or, or you're interested in a blockchain project, uh, there's this may be a better way to do it. Uh, because it's off chain, like I said, the blockchain is just a constraint that we have to make Bitcoin a decentralized currency. And, but we don't need it. We don't need to use it all the time. Lightning doesn't use the blockchain at all. And that's why it's so good. So uh, if you're using a blockchain to build your application, uh, remove the constraint and come build something real. Get in touch with us. So thank you. And I'll, I'll take your questions now. Uh, so you can follow me on Verify. Uh, we can, you can follow us on Verify BTC on Twitter. Or you can go on our website. We have a lot of uh, uh, blog on our website that you can find. I can explain to you any Bitcoin technologies that you're interested to. Uh, so uh, this this is a very good place to start uh, or to to advance your your study of Bitcoin. So I'll take I'll stop presenting and sharing my screen, and I'll take your questions right now, and I'll also send the slides. Thank you. Thank you, Ugo. Uh, thank you for assisting. And let me know. Uh, I'm glad you liked the presentation, particularly since uh, you're a very professional Lightning developer. So it uh, feels great to hear that. L let me know if you have a question. Scott Lyon says, so proof of work is drop on liquid. Yes, that's exactly right. So proof of work, the, the basically the machine, well, the Ad algorithm protocol that makes Bitcoin uh, Sybil resisting, so basically spam resistant, and that allows Bitcoin to have security, uh, is removed on Liquid because Liquid fully depends on Bitcoin security for the, the existence of, of Bitcoin state, so of who holds what Bitcoin on Bitcoin. But on Liquid side, it's, uh, it's a federation of uh, companies that manage liquid there's like 16 companies that manage liquid um and they are in control of the network so big don't, don't get me wrong liquid is an enterprise network and lightning is a decentralized network it's very different one from the other but still i i still think that no matter what there can be interesting uh, projects that can come out out of liquid uh and i still think it's the right approach because if there would be mining on liquid then liquid just becomes a competition to Bitcoin and it creates all sorts of weird incentives and uh, and things. Uh, so do I have a block explorer? Yes. Give me just one second. I'll send you that. So I sent the block stream explorer. It has a um, liquid uh side so you can uh, check liquid transactions and when you check liquid transactions you might not find much of info because like like i said liquid is very um it's very confidential so you don't see the amounts of who's sending what to who well you never see who's sending what to who you see the address is sending to this address well in liquid you don't see the amounts uh and you don't see the type of asset so if i'm sending you this is interesting about liquid if i'm sending you us dollars on liquid uh you won't be able to make a difference well someone else someone that's uh, analyzing our transactions won't be able to make a difference if it's a us dollar or if it's a bitcoin on liquid so i'm sending on chat right now the slides to the presentation uh, thank you, Jaime Enrique, for listening. Uh, I'm glad you liked the presentation. So, Scott, you asked how many nodes there's on Lightning or Liquid, Scott? On Lightning, like I presented, there's around 13,000 nodes. On Liquid, uh, it's hard to know how many nodes there's on Liquid. There's how many, like, Federation members and, like, let's call them, like, miners. There's uh, six, 15 
but anybody can run a full node on Liquid. So you can still verify that the federation is behaving appropriately. So, uh, and we don't know how many nodes there's on Liquid. Tom Thibault asks, Liquid assets on Lightning. Does it work with actual Lightning network? And that, is it using a fork of Lightning? Yes. So uh, I, I forgot to specify that, that when you're using Liquid on Lightning, you, you can't, uh you you're not able yet to interact with like bitcoin lightning on bitcoin network so it's it's a fork of lightning it's the same kind of technology uh but it's not fully compatible yet because how are you going to send liquid assets onto the bitcoin network you can't so obviously there's a co compatibility issue there but there's some people working towards making uh swaps between so the exchange of let's say US dollar liquid asset all lightning change is exchanging it for Bitcoin. If I want to buy Bitcoin with US dollar and I have a token of US dollar uh, on liquid, I can just exchange it with someone anonymously, instantly with no fees and who knows what uh, amount right so um so yeah it, it is using a fork of lightning tom uh and it's not fully like mainnet ready uh i'd say it's still what i presented is all very uh, in the early days by the way like i don't want anybody to think that this is ready for a uh, billion users but still it's uh we're getting there sphinx at least is the one i'd say it's it's commercially ready for thousands of users. Is there any other question? Hey, Gustavo, uh, thanks uh, for the presentation. I, I missed the beginning, uh, so I hope I'm not going to re-ask questions that were already uh, asked, but uh, uh, or things that you already talked about. but. Actually, I don't think it is because it's like uh, it was towards the end of the presentation. It's uh, that thing that uh, the Italian, uh, I think it was an Italian company was developing that project after ABC um, that uses like a uh, computing power. It's kind of what is, is, is that like some kind of like a uh, thing where like people could who need like a computing power on the cloud and they want to buy uh, power, they can just like send Bitcoin for, for that uh, computing power for like, I don't know, a rendering job or something that requires a lot of computational power for like uh, AI calculation or something like that. Yeah, that's exactly right, Jose. So uh, yes, I was talking uh, about that at the end. And yes, that's Prometheus uh, by Pandora Core. So you'll find it at PandoraCore.com. Um, and yes, it's exactly how you described it. And what's interesting is that it's done in a trustless it's a, it's non reversible so if uh, because there's a, a all sort of protocol of disputes so i cannot it's it's very it's it's almost unlike unlikely impossible to scam like i cannot take your money and not offer you the product because it's using like bitcoin escrow multi signature contracts uh that will only send the funds if if you if you send back uh, the the product and how does it verify it? Um, this is kind of complicated. They 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 they're basing themselves of uh, of an algorithm that will take uh, very small pieces, random pieces of the computation, and just by taking the small random pieces and results, uh, basically by hashing the um, yeah, it's basically a hash of the computing. Uh, we can get the if the result was appropriate or not. So that's uh, pretty cool. I'm not a machine learning or computing expert, uh, so I wouldn't know uh, the details on that side. Uh, but I'm I'm pretty confident that 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 it has potential and and it's it's an active development. One more one more question on that. Do you, like the computing power that uh, they're using, that's like uh, that's not a, like a, the the off of the hashing power of uh, Bitcoin, right? It's a separate uh, their own uh, computing farm, right? Exactly. So it's very important, uh, once again, to understand that making these projects the wrong way 
is making it all on chain or using all Bitcoin resources uh, to to make these kinds of projects. So that's the the kind of the 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 Ethereum or the EOS strategy is to use the blockchain and the network not only for verification but for computing itself. So that's why Ethereum calls itself the world computer. Well, look how it turns out. It crashes all the time. It's clogged. It doesn't work, right? So on this case, we, we don't use computing on the network at all. We just use um, payments and settlement on the network and verification of the computing. Thank you, Jose, for the questions. So I see Scott says thank you and Tom as well. Thank you, guys. Uh, any other question? Anybody? Or comment or just uh, confession? Uh, really, we don't judge. Yeah, perhaps one more kind of uh, comment slash question. Uh, there was uh, an app, I guess, like, uh, I, don't, I don't know, like out of the apps you covered, covered, you know, there were those two very interesting messaging projects that I had heard of. And uh, I had also heard recently about um, this game. I don't know, maybe if you spoke about it earlier, but it was like a game, I think it's like on the Lightning Network. You know the one I'm talking about? Light Knight? Uh, yeah, I Is think that that's it? the one. Yeah. Did you talk about that one already? No, I didn't talk about games. I honestly, I could make a presentation just about Bitcoin games, since oh, there's yeah, too many. Uh, I'll, I'll see, but yeah, there's. Well, this is pretty cool. So, there's a game called Light Knight. Uh, I'm gonna try to find the link. And basically, Light Knight is not is is doesn't. Once again, we're not developing a game on Bitcoin. Like. We, let's not get like confused that's what's happening right it's just that light night will is using bitcoin payments bitcoin lightning payments so let's say if you want to make a um you're using light night and you want to buy a game um uh, armor or like a weapon in the game well you can just buy the weapon with lightning with bitcoin on lightning so instantly you can send two cents and you get your weapon in the game so that's what they they've been doing lightning i think i think it's pretty cool and also they've been um using liquid assets to represent those uh in-game tokens so let's say when i'm buying a a weapon in the game well it's represented by a cryptographic uh token on the liquid network that is unique so and that means that basically if the developers of the game uh switch uh technologies they just remake their apps well they can get the state of who had what or they don't even have to get the state of who had which in-game uh weapon just the users can say hey i had this weapon in the game uh, I have this game because I have the cryptographic key on the liquid network associated to this uh, liquid asset that is joined to this in-game weapon. So it's a little bit complicated, but briefly, that's what it is. You can you can buy uh, with the Lightning Network Bitcoin. Bitcoin on the Lightning Network, you can buy uh, stuff on the game, and that stuff is linked with liquid asset tokens for them to have a cryptographic representation. Peter uh, will uh, will post a link on uh, YouTube uh, in, a, in around a few days, probably around uh, Monday, we'll be doing so. Uh, but also I wanna let you know, Peter, uh, as I should let everyone know, uh, to get into these meetups, you need to RSVP, to say that you you confirm your attendance before uh, the meetup starts, else you won't be able to get in. And once you you confirm your attendance on meetup.com, uh, the link will appear on the meetup.com page, uh, and it says on the side it's on the side uh, to the right on the bottom right, uh, not too bottom but in the middle of the page. It says link will only be available to those that uh, uh, mark their attendance. So 
this is just uh, uh, a reminder. Uh, Scott says, without proof of work, it seems it's a little more risky. What if some has more than 51% of the notes? That's a good question, Scott. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what uh, happens uh, at that situation. So this is actually this is a misconception of nodes that nodes have their power uh just because they're a node and, and like like they were they had a vote uh this is the case for like uh proof of stake for some proof of stake systems but in bitcoin or in liquid or uh nodes don't have their power because they exist they have the power because a user uses it so let's say i have um Let's say I, I, I spin up 1,000 nodes. Does that mean that on the Bitcoin network and there's 100,000 nodes on the Bitcoin network? Does that mean that I have 1% of the power on Bitcoin in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, the nodes? Because I have a lot of nodes, I have more power? Not exactly. Um, it's, I, I have the same power if I have one node than if I have 10,000. But if I have, uh, if all my nodes are, are nodes that I, if my 1,000 nodes that I've deployed on the Bitcoin network are actually nodes that I then collectively us as 10,000 nodes, we have more power because we're more users. We have more Bitcoin that's being verified by those nodes. So we have more economical power or user influence and network influence in that sense. Uh, but if we're just nodes that are online, we, we, we don't have much power. So that's the first thing. If there's more uh, if someone has control of 51% of nodes on liquid on, on, on Bitcoin, this isn't a problem. But if your question is about if, what if someone has control of 51% of the federation or like of the of the signing block signing capabilities, basically, what if someone has 51% control of the equivalent of miners on liquid? Um, well, that's well liquid is done uh, since it doesn't use proof of work uh, and it doesn't use mining it has a very different algorithm that doesn't require 51 percent to attack the network it requires two-thirds to attack the network so every time there's a block on liquid it not it doesn't only need 51 percent of uh uh, the federation of uh, the 15 out of 15 um, federation members to 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 be okay. It needs 66 percent, uh, two thirds, basically. So then uh, it, the threshold is much higher. But what happens if someone has control of those uh, 70 percent of uh, of those nodes? Well, or or if these companies they just get together and they want to take over the liquid network? Well, they can do that. Uh, but they're the main user. The main users of the liquid network are these own companies. So why would they destroy a product that they built for themselves? You know, like in this case, the 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 incentive isn't quite the incentive structure kind of works because it's it's not necessarily um, a network built for users as more that is built for enterprises and organizations. So. Uh, but then, uh, but but it's still the risk is still there. That's why I wouldn't hold Bitcoin on liquid. I could I could use liquid for, let's say, uh, uh, make a smart contract or for uh, get some assets. Uh, but I wouldn't use liquid to uh, hold my Bitcoin long term. There's only one way to do that. That's on the Bitcoin network with a multi signature contract with hardware wallets uh distributed geographically with a node many items there's just do it cold storage style uh if you want to know how to do it you can call us verify we can help you on every stage of the process we've done it with tens of clients handling millions of dollars of bitcoin and it has always gone right until now so let us know if you need help uh, on that any other question guys Comment. Well, I think we're nearing the end, it seems. So unless there's another question in the next 30 seconds, uh, we'll wrap this up. So thank you all for being here again. 
uh we'll be posting this on youtube and it's uh, it's been a pleasure we'll have a we have another webinar um next uh the 25th so basically the next thursday exactly a week from now we'll have another webinar will be way more technical uh it's posted on meetup i just haven't emailed everyone yet we'll be doing so very shortly uh i just did it now actually uh and it's on electrum wallet and server plus bitcoin core workshop so we've been like like i said we've been managing uh security for many of our clients when it comes to bitcoin we don't host we, we're not custodial we don't manage their keys but we we manage uh assistant support and integration for them uh to achieve sovereign security for their bitcoins so well, i'll be presenting how to make a setup for yourself you can do at your home on your desktop or uh, and you can have uh one of the most advanced and achievable forms of security on bitcoin that we've done for many clients so i'll be presenting that freely uh electron wallet server and bitcoin core um and the week after on the 30th we have a meetup on um another subject and uh, the subject will be on data with blockstream api so if you guys haven't had the chance to go check our case study yet uh you should do it it's uh, one of the biggest values propositions that we've given to the community um and we spent uh, tens of hours doing that work i'll send the link now and basically we did data bitcoin blockchain data analysis to uh, and, and that we allowed us to get data from the past 10 years of bitcoin and it allowed us to model an alternative situation where folks would have adopted uh fee saving technologies in a full scale and it, we discovered that users could have saved 500 million dollars uh worth of bitcoin fees so that's a lot of money and um, so our my workshop uh slash webinar uh, the june 30 will present uh how to do bitcoin blockchain data analysis uh, as well so that's it for today guys thank you for being here and we'll see each other another time uh once again don't hesitate if you need help or have questions we're always here for you all right take care everyone have a good uh weekend bye